Well, welcome and good evening, wonderful Dice of All Abundance. I'm Lunar D8, and I mainly want to talk about Dragon Ball Z, Markiplier, and Song of the Hedgehog. Yeah, I kind of spaced out there for some. I'm sorry. No, I'm not going to restart the video. No. Anyway, um, first thing I want to say is, I just got back from work, so I wear more clothes. I'm probably out in the shower after this, but um, yesterday, before work, I went going through watching all the the newest thing by Markiplier. It's called Markiplier in Space. And I had to go through it multiple times because it's like a sort of choose your own adventure thing. And I tried to get every possible scenario. And I'll say this. It's absolutely hilarious. And I think Markiplier in Space should be considered movie of the year. But then again, there is a part two. So we will wait and see how that turns out. But I will say this. Everything that Markiplier's sense of humor, the acting, just everything about it. Markiplier, I really can't even say it was acting. He was just being himself. And it was hilarious. And but you can tell like a lot of work went into it. Like you can tell like they did everything like very professional and they put a lot of effort into it. And I don't know how long it would have took, at least maybe a year for him to put all that together. So they definitely didn't. They definitely didn't skimp because it tells like they put a lot of effort into it, and there was a lot of slapstick, especially with Mark himself, and it was very hilarious. So definitely be a chance. Watch the Markiplier in space thing, which I know everyone knows Markiplier at that point, but it's more so. I just want to say that it's absolutely awesome. I just want to say I enjoyed it. That being said, if anyone actually does watch this video at any point ever, suggest a Markiplier to play the horror rhythm game Thumper and the platformer Jubilee and the cute, gory, but more so cute, um, Perfect Apocalypse Trilogy. It's got Love at First Bite, Purgatory Forever, and Patches Inferno. Yes, it's all cat puns. All of it. But it's it's hilarious. It's a trilogy. It's pretty short, but it's amazing. And also, don't say anything to Markiplier about me or anything. I just want you guys to suggest a Markiplier play those games, because I want to watch Markiplier play Thumper. I want to watch Markiplier play Jubilee and the entire Perfect Apocalypse trilogy, just because I think it would be hilarious, and I want to hear his reactions to the game. I also want to hear how much he's going to cuss about Jubilee and um, Thumper. Beyond that, a Dragon Ball Super Superhero movie should be coming out in Japan here in a few weeks. And, you know, apparently Raditz is going to be in it. Which, that's interesting, but here's the thing. That brings up point. You guys are all familiar with Team Four Star, right? Anyway, there was another person who was doing a Dragon Ball alternate reality, Dragon Ball Z. It's just one dude, and he was doing that stuff back before Team Four Star even started. Now, he did like 70 episodes of alternate reality Dragon Ball Z, and his stuff is more all over the place, jumping from one saga to another. Like, and he's one person doing all the voices. And he's got a lot of like fan arts that are in it. Um, this, I think it's from the alternate reality Dragon Ball Z. Um, I think it's like 35 or 45 or something. It's the episode where like Gohan's having trouble beating Cell, so Raditz comes in and beats Cell. And he's got like a bunch of sketch comedy stuff in it too like saturday night live pretty much so if you ever get a chance just like check out gozar on youtube that was the name of the guy g-o-z-a-r heck i think he even did a voice in the um cooler's revenge that team four star did so i think he was in that or was he in the other i know team four star and him had some conversations they it just gozar just you know, moved on to other things. It is a shame that we didn't get Team Four Star to do more, 
I still appreciate every episode they did. They were hilarious. It's just I know Toei and everything was having issues with them, and that's unfortunate. Because honestly, I think we wouldn't have Dragon Ball Super if it wasn't for Team Four Star. Because I think Team Four Star doing Dragon Ball Z abridged helped rekindle the interest in Dragon Ball and anime. I think the anime industry itself wouldn't be as big as it t- was today if it wasn't for, you know, Masako X and Lana Bator and Takahata and all those guys, Kaiser Neko and all those guys. You know, I don't think... I don't think anime would be as big as it is today because I think they helped rekindle an interest in it. Particularly Dragon Ball Z. I don't think we would have gotten Dragon Ball Super. I don't think Beerus... Or any of them would have existed if it wasn't for Team Four Star. And I know, of course, Kira Toriyama on the road, everything was just, you know, it's the fans that are really, you know, I mean, we appreciate Kira Toriyama and everything they do, and they're amazing. It's just, it's just, it's kind of like Keanu Reeves said in an interview. They asked him, how many John Wick movies do you plan to make? He said, as many as the fans want to see. Which means one day we're going to have like a John Wick 37. Which I'm cool for. I still think, like, would Keanu Reeves make a good Ryu from Street Fighter? Or Wolverine? And Because they're going to reboot X-Men. So. But I'm just saying. Alternate reality Dragon Ball Z by Gozar was pretty cool. And of course, I think Team Four Star is amazing. Of course, the actual Dragon Ball series is amazing too. And I know that they just did the alternate reality Dragon Ball Z. And I know Team Four Star did, you know, Dragon Ball Z abridged. Mainly because they just really loved Dragon Ball. And they just wanted to show their love for a series. And I think what they did was amazing. But I think also it did. It helped, like, stir a lot of interest in Dragon Ball Z. To the point that, because for a while there, after GT, a lot of people started dying off on interest. And I feel like, you know, Masako and Lanny, you know, they just helped rekindle that fire. Though it is a shame we're never going to get to hear Masako do the uh, Super Saiyan 3 scream. And then there's always, you know... What about Lanny doing the thing where Vegeta blows himself up that yell? Apparently, I hate their vocal cords or something. I'm an asshole. But I'm kind of getting confused about what I'm talking about. Um, I'm not sure anymore. I, I know. I mean, I'm just want to say, look up Gozar on YouTube because he did the. Um, alternate reality Dragon Ball Z. And while Dragon Ball Z abridged is much more polished, I think alternate reality Dragon Ball Z is also really funny. And I very much enjoyed it as well. Um, I still think it would be interesting, though, if, like, End of Super is able to tie itself up neatly back into the End of Z, which would mean, say, Beerus either goes to sleep or dies. You might say, well, Shin would die if Beerus dies. No! What if Shin refuses with uh, Kibito and because he's at Patara earrings, you know, it keeps him from dying when Beerus dies. So that means they would get refused, Beerus will die, and of course Whis has no longer got angel powers or anything when the god of destruction dies. And let's just say Universe 7 is then isolated from the other universes. And let's say whatever happens that kills Beerus also makes God energy unattainable. Which means Super Saiyan God, Ultra Instinct, um, shit. Super Saiyan God, Ultra Instinct, Super Saiyan Blue, even, you know, Ultra Ego and all that no longer attainable. And of course, Frieza wouldn't be able to use Golden Frieza anymore. And let's say Frieza winds up dying. And instead of going back to the hell he came from in Super, he goes in down to the hell with Cell that we see in GT. You can also say that let's have a fight. You know, like Frieza killed Krillin and made Goku become Super Saiyan. Let's just say Goku gets the final transformation of Super 
because Yamcha is like protecting Chi Chi and Bulma and Goten and all that, and Yamcha is like giving it his all, and Frieza just beats the shit out. I mean, I mean the most fucking violent fight in all of Dragon Ball history. Something that makes all the fighters and Baki the grappler go, "Oh my god, that's a lot of blood." And like, I want Yujiro to be like, "How the fuck is Yamcha standing?" I want. I can't think of it. like, Baki, Retsu. What character would you pick to be like if they could witness a Dragon Ball Z fight? Who would you pick? Then again, if you could like Isekai any of the uh, Baki characters into any anime or any movie series, who and where? But uh, what was I talking about? Give me a second. I will remember. Fuck. Um, shit. Give me a sec. I'll remember. Something about Raditz. Fuck. Alright, I want the serious time. Anyway, so Yamcha just gets the shit kicked out of him by Frieza. And then Goku shows up last moment. And either he shows up in time to save Yamcha, or he witnesses Yamcha's death, or his corpse, or something. I don't know. Anyway, then it makes Goku explode in anger and then Goku gets his last transformation and then Goku beats the shit out of Frieza, uses Kamehameha waves, all that stuff. We get a, like a complete rundown. Like Goku basically runs a fucking clinic kicking the shit out of Frieza's ass. Breaking bones, everything. And then at the end I want Goku to use the wolf fang fist. Yamcha's move. I want Goku to use Yamcha's move to literally tear Frieza apart until Frieza is dead. Beyond that, you might say, well, what about the Pilaf gang being young? Whereas in the end of Z and the beginning of GT, they're super old. Let's say they betray Bulma and all the others when Cooler shows up, because Cooler's going to exist in Super at some point. And the wish goes wrong or something bad happens and they become super fucking old. And also they become, you know, you know, everybody knows they've betrayed him. So Bulma's like, yeah, don't ever fucking come around again. Which is why then Pilaf becomes so fucking desperate. And then Pilaf's like, please, can you like use the Dragon Balls to make us young again? This, it sucks being old like this. And they're like, no, fuck you. And then Pilaf's like, Ur! and then they go to get the Black Star Balls from you know, and then I think that ties up all the loose ends that would then make everything in the end of Super line up to be able to run immediately into the end of Z slash beginning of GT. Then, let's say once we tie that up like that, you know, the cool thing about that is Dragon Ball AF, the stuff by Toyotaro. We could then start animating that. Where we have Super Saiyan 5. And whole Super Saiyan 5 being white hair and all that. That could literally be that you get Super Saiyan 4 strong enough that you can then be up without the use of God energy. You can then tap into Ultra Instinct. I don't know. It could be something entirely different. Or I know initially at one point Akira Toriyama wanted the Super Saiyan 4 to be all gold hair color. But of course, I think the design of Super Saiyan 4 in GT actually looks so much cooler. Especially with Gogeta versus uh, Omega Shenron. That's fucking awesome. But yeah, we could actually get Dragon Ball AF animated. But then again, there's a bunch of fan series out there. Like, there's literally a thing called Dragon Ball Multiverse. Where, like, Ginyu takes over King Cold's body and goes, like, multiple transformations of super spiky alien stuff further and then you know Vegeta and you know uh, Goku stay fused of Vegito in one universe and they had Bra and then she's like a Super Saiyan 2 with extra powers you know and then anyway I'm not going to try to spoil this though I'm just saying you can also get that animated like who has to talk to who about what rights in order to make that an actual series that would be really cool now I do say this I am a little bit 
down on the whole Dragon Ball Super superhero. I'm still interested to see what happens. But I do dislike that it's all CG. I mean, I understand it helps to, you know, produce faster. It's just... I... I want good quality. And I feel like, like I'm not sure if we're really going to get it or not. But at the very least, all it means is this. It means the next movie after Superhero needs to be all hand-drawn. Because I'm an asshole. But yeah, it's just the fact that Raditz could be the movie. Like, what if, like, and here's the thing there's so many thoughts. Like, and, like, apparently Dragon Ball Super Broly is going to be showing up for the movie. So I don't know what's happening there. We go on to be fighting these two androids here and there. And of course, we might have Cell show back up. There might also be a clone of Broly. Maybe, like, what happened to Raditz's body after the fight with Goku? We never really addressed that in Dragon Ball Z. Did we just leave Raditz there and rot? I mean, Jero was still active at that time. What if he captured Raditz's body and made Raditz into an android? We'd have Android 22, Raditz. We'd have Super Saiyan Raditz, maybe Super Saiyan God Raditz, as an android. Like a Hellfighter 17 thing, but as Raditz. I don't know. But here's the other thing. Are we going to get a bio Broly? Um, is there a chance that maybe we'll get Dr. Dro again, but he's like buff like Android 13 from the 13 movie? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this. Um, so yeah. By the way, something else I was thinking about is this. We know we're going to see the Super Saiyan Sonic in the new Sonic movie. Because in a couple days... In two days, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 comes out, and I'm going to be going to watch that. I do I do feel disappointed that there's no 3D option, as far as I can tell. But I'm still going to go watch it. I'm going to go watch Sonic the Hedgehog 2, but I'm not going to lie. The main reason I'm going to go watch it isn't because I'm a nerd. That I am a nerd. I am an otaku. I am a weeb. But that's not why I'm going to go watch it. I'm mainly going to watch it for the same reason I watched the first one. Jim Carrey. And here's the thing. We know we're going to see Super Saiyan Sonic, you know, with the Chaos Emeralds. There's no way they're going to put the Chaos Emeralds in there and not give us the golden hair of Sonic the Hedgehog. But here's the thing. Can Dr. Robotnik use the Chaos Emeralds to go golden? You know, we'd have a Super Saiyan Jim Carrey. Imagine that. Super Saiyan Jim Carrey. That giant mustache, but gold. With, like, Super Saiyan energy around him. Super Saiyan Jim Carrey. But then, of course, the mustache got me thinking. Vegeta from GT with the mustache. And plus, you know, the Vegeta from that's kind of older. I mean, Jim Carrey, I think, is, what, 60 years old? So, I think it balances out. I mean, 60, looks 40. Good for him. But, Jim Carrey as Dragon Ball GT Vegeta. Think about that. And I, I mean, for him to play it fairly serious, he could probably do a little slash. I mean, it's Jim Carrey. It, it, he has full liberty to, to do the character how he wants. But I'm saying this. I feel Jim Carrey would try his best to try to be true to the character of Vegeta. So, Jim Carrey. Cause the, the mustache of Dr. Robotnik made me think, you know, the mustache of Dragon Ball GT. Granted, it's a different mustache. I'm just thinking, imagine Jim Carrey as Dragon Ball GT Vegeta. And then imagine that later on in the series, when he goes Super Saiyan 4. Imagine that. Super Saiyan 4 Jim Carrey. As, you know, the uh, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Which you mainly just see that during the dr Dark Shadow Dragon thing. Yes. Now, debates whether or not you would actually use Jim Carrey for baby Vegeta. Because technically that's a different aesthetic. I don't know. But I'm just saying. Mustache Vegeta. And of course we have, you know, Super Saiyan 4 Jim Carrey. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the Sonic movie. And I'm also kind of curious. Like what on earth would they use for an end credits this time? Are we going to see Amy Rose or Shadow? Are we going to get Shadow the Hedgehog? 
I feel we might also have to get a little... Yeah, I don't think that would like te tease Amy. Because, I mean, that was later on in the series. It went Tails, Knuckles, and then Shadow, right? So we get Shadow. Okay, but here's the thing. I don't know who's voicing... T I actually you know what. I don't know for certain, but I think the... Vo I actually, I think Chris... Is Chris Pratt the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog? I can't remember. I can't remember. And I can't be bothered to look it up. And I'm pretty sure the voice actor for Tails might actually be the legitimate voice actor from, you know, the video games and animes. The person who actually works with Sega. I'm not sure. I don't know. And I'm pretty sure Knuckles is Idris Elba. If I'm saying that right. Which... Holy shit, the man is jacked. Only I can build muscle like that. Not that you're going to actually see him in the movie, but still. I remember watching, like, you saw him in the Fast Furious movie and a couple other movies, mainly the new... I was going to say Deadpool. Um, Suicide Squad. It's called the, the new... The Suicide... Yeah, they put the word the at the front of it. That's You couldn't make it more descriptive, like change a different word so it doesn't... Great, I liked both Suicide Squad movies, but I feel like there should have been a little bit more difference to the title. Um, what am I... Right, Shadow! Who would voice Shadow? Who would be the voice actor for Shadow? Uh, shit. I don't know. Type in the comments below who should be the voice actor for Shadow the Hedgehog. Because I imagine that as long as the sales do really good for Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which they should, because it's Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's got Jim Carrey, and Idris Elba, and people whose names I can't remember, probably Chris Pratt. I, I'm i sorry, Chris Pratt, if you are the voice actor of Sonic, and I don't remember. And if you are not, then I'm sorry to whoever actually is. And who's the voice actor of Tails? I'm sorry, I can't remember things. I can't remember who the actor who, like the human actor, who's like Sonic's friend in the first movie, I don't remember the actor's name or the or the um, character's name. I'm sorry, I don't I don't remember. But and I don't know the guy who is Doctor Robotnik's friend in the show either. I don't remember that. I'm just saying this. Type in the comments who would be a great voice actor for Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog. Um, I'm trying to think of someone, but absolutely no one's popping in my mind. Can't think of anybody. Shit. Yeah. 